Power. Real talk. I am going to say this straight from my heart and divine source within myself. This is the message I have to give to humanity. Those who have an ear, let them hear. For I will not be chasing anyone to hear this message. So get it now. You are the power source of your life. You are the power source of your life experience. I'm going to say that again. You are the power source of your life experience. You are, and nobody else is, the power source of your life. You are. I'll tell you something undeniably true. No one can or will experience your life but you. I'll say that again. No one can experience your life but you. You are the only one who would ever experience your life. We are intimately intertwined and connected within the universal collective of oneness but the life that you live and experience will only be experienced by you because you are the power source of your life no one can think your thoughts no one can feel your feelings no one can have your point of view no one can make your choices. No one can use your will. No one can. That is completely on you. So anything that happens or take place in your life experience happens by your own use of your own power of will. By divine universal law. And that law will not ever be overrived and it has no respect of persons. It simply does what it does. The power to use and choose for your life experience is completely on you. Let me break this down a little further for you. All persons, situations, events, circumstances, relationships, dynamics, and even characteristic traits of your own personality is due to your choices and your choices alone. You are using your power for all of these things to exist in you and in your life experience. Nothing can or will ever exist in your life experience without your permission. You have to give your permission. You have to accept it or comply which is the use of your power of will. By universal law, nothing can ever happen to you without your consent or permission. Nothing can or will exist in your life experience without your permission your acceptance or your compliance. The divine universal law works solely with your and by your permission. No one will or shall be allowed to transgress against your will. 
it cannot be by divine law. This is divine decree. This is the power in which we were born and created with. You have the power to make of your life experience what you will for yourself. I'll say this again. You have the power to make or create your life experience for yourself, for your own happiness, for your own growth and development, for your own well-being. This power was given to you for yourself to use for the good of yourself. Now, there is a caveat to this power and law. The caveat is you do not have license to dictate anyone else's life story, life journey, life choices, no matter who they are. Every person has this power and by divine law, their power of will will not be transgressed against. It is futile to ever try or even give it a thought to do so. You will not nor can dictate someone else's life choices or their pathway. In fact, to do so is to transgress against yourself. It is an adverse use of your power of will and you will suffer the consequences for it by universal law. The divine law does not care what your reasons are and it does not care whether you thought it to be a noble thing to do. The moment that you attempt to push your will on someone else, you have effectively tried to control that person's life, which is a transgression by law. The law is just. It will only give you what you have sown what you gave permission for, what you have accepted to be in the existence of your life experience, what you choose and comply with will exist within yourself and in your life experience by law. This is your power. If you give permission for peace in your life, you will have peace. If you give permission for discord in your life, you will have discord. If you give permission for poverty in your life, then you will have poverty. If you give permission for wealth in your life, then you will be wealthy. If you give permission to love in your life, then you will have love. If you give permission to hate in your life, then you will have hate. And you will have it as your own personal life experience in which you and you alone will experience it. All because you are mad, upset, and having a bad experience doesn't mean that everybody else is. The same is true if you are having good, exciting, loving feelings. It doesn't mean that everybody else is experiencing what you are experiencing. Have you ever, and I'm sure you have, went 
went out with someone for the day and had a wonderful experience and the other person thought it was shit. Have you ever eaten something that you thought was disgusting and the other person thought it was wonderful? Of course you have. We all have had those experiences before. What does that tell you? It should tell you that your experience is solely your own. Even though both of you were there at the same time doing the exact same thing. Your life experience is felt and experienced individually. Even if both or all parties that participate in an event or happening and all had a wonderful experience, did they all feel wonderful for the same reasons? Were they all touched and lifted by the same thing? in the same way? Of course not. There may be overlaps of reasons, but no two experience things in the same way because we're all unique. We all have different choices. We're all making different choices. We're all given permission to different things. We're all accepting different things. We're all complying with different things and no one can know yourself better than yourself and no one can dictate your choice and use of your power of will. The same way goes in the reverse as well. Two people may be upset about an event, but when you talk to them, their reasons for being upset would be different because they're individual people. The fact of the matter is no one can know anyone else's mind, anyone else's heart, or have anyone else's perception on anything. You can only know that for yourself and you can only know your own. How many times have you given someone a compliment and they took it as an insult? How many times perhaps you have insulted someone intentionally and they laughed and took it as a compliment? Your insult not only was taken as a compliment, but perhaps it was taken as a source of inspiration for the person you intended to insult. It happens all the time. Of course, you could compliment someone and they take it as such. And of course, you can insult someone and they take that as you intended. But the point is the attempt to try to control or influence someone else is a futile exercise. And you would be better off being and doing what makes you feel good with respect to your own self and to all other persons. No one is obligated to feel what you feel. Value what you value or live up to the standards in which you set out for yourself. That is your responsibility because they are yours. The obligation and responsibility of your own values is yours and it's for you to do it yourself. This is the true meaning of freedom. And freedom only reigns when you acknowledge that everyone else is free as well. Freedom is something we all are born with, created with, and that will never change. Even people who are enslaved 
are using their power of freedom to be enslaved because they use their power of choice and given their permission to be in compliance with or accepting enslavement they are actually enslaving themselves by their own personal divine power they didn't have to make those choices and they have the power to change their mind they have the freedom not to be enslaved they have the freedom to make other choices this is the true meaning of repentance repentance mean to change one's mind to make different choices to withdraw your permission for something to exist in your life to decide not to be compliant to that which you no longer like existing in your life experience to no longer accept what you have given your permission to in your life experience we have the power to choose to accept to give permission for but we also have we also have the power to withdraw our permission our acceptance our compliance when it does not suit us or we don't want it anymore that is what repentance means divine law is in full operation nothing can or will change the operation of divine law you have the power in you that works in partnership with universal law on your behalf that is your power and you have the freedom of its full use are you using it to your advantage or to your discredit that's a question that only you can answer for yourself now this video has gone on a bit long so i'll make a part two where i will get to the nitty gritty of how you use your personal divine power and freedom of choice and how to use it wisely thank you for listening until next time divine blessings be upon you with wisdom